Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, friends. Good evening, in-laws and outlaws. It is a great pleasure for me to be a part of my planet this year. And I'm very thankful to the groups who work together to put this together year after year and also especially for inviting me to be part of this very enriching engagement which should fire us up to stand together in solidarity to confront the global system that is clearly not sustainable, that is clearly pushing a lot of people underground. I, when Barbara was speaking, she mentioned the EU directive that extractive industry should publish the payments they make to, uh, to governments. And if my friend who's sitting close to where I sat a few minutes ago passed me a note, and I feel like sharing the secret of what he wrote on that note. Should I do that? Should I share it? Okay. <laughs> he asked a question that I found very interesting. He said, how come, why don't we start a campaign asking the companies to publish what they don't pay. It may not strike you as something, but honestly, many of the corporations extracting oil, extracting gold, extracting diamond, and all the resources, they don't pay for much of what they take. They're simply stealing and plundering. I could give you specific examples from my country. Nigeria, not one oil company, not Shell, not Exxon, not Chevron has ever published the exact amount of oil they extract. So when they tell us how much they pay to the government, I could use that as a piece of paper on which to put my cup of coffee if I have coffee to drink. Anyway, I believe that Rio Plus 20 ought to be a great opportunity for the world to look back critically at what has happened since 1992. But from all we heard from the preparations and discussions what will happen in Rio in June 2012 may not reflect or indicate that there has been much reflection on what agenda was set and what hopes people had. But this is not surprising. It follows the same trajectory that has been seen in current multilateral spaces, where we've seen a total capture, a near, a near total capture, I would say, not a total capture, but a very clear capture of public spaces by private corporations. Private corporations have gone as far as colonizing governments around the world, not just in the global south, but equally in the global north. And they have infiltrated and captured the United Nations structures. This is why they couldn't be progress with regard to climate change negotiations, because corporations want to carry on business as usual. This is why we have all the false solutions for about tackling global warming. This is why the whole idea of carbon offsetting came into play. That I could pollute in one part of the world and believe that certain trees in another part of the world are offsetting for my pollution so that I can keep on polluting and feel good about it. Carbon offsetting is very upsetting. It's the same paradigm that has going step by step, getting more complicated and more vicious and pushing more people into poverty. Ideas like red. 
I like to lift the red card to red. Because red, although red is quite clear that it's not about stopping deforestation, it's just reducing emissions by slowing down deforestation, red is creating and is said to create more problems, and it is worrying because Rio Plus 20 may set up an agenda that would put red on a stronger footing and encourage corporations to use this new false solution to dispossess communities, grab more lands in Africa, in Asia and Latin America. And grabbing lands is not just about grabbing forests. They grab it, they, will go, they may go as far as grabbing soil. So we're having soil grabs, land grabs, forest grabs, sea grabs, and of course the atmosphere has already been grabbed. When we look at the multilateral systems and the failures, especially with regard to climate change negotiations, what happened in Copenhagen, what happened in Cancun, and the betrayal of Africa in Durban, we see clearly that we have a lot to worry about when we seek to create a global platform to tackle the global crisis that is confronting all of us. But how are we going to do that? I believe this conference will examine ways that we can work together as social movements, as civil society groups, and as citizens of the world to recover our power over decision-making processes globally. If our governments are elected by us, they have to listen to us. With particular reference to Rio Plus 20, you know, a, a lot of us just talk about green economy without looking at the full focus of Rio Plus 20. The Rio Plus 20 includes a disc discussions on resource scarcity, renewable energy, and energy efficiency on water, oceans, agriculture, and materials. And each of these issues raise serious concerns when you consider the direction in which things are going. I already mentioned about the fact that many, many of the crises we're having are intractable simply because corporations want to keep making profit. This is also why we are so hooked on fossil fuels driven civilization, because corporations tell us that this is the most efficient way, the most cost effective way to produce energy. And we do know that if the true cost of crude oil were to be paid, perhaps only a few people would be able to pay for one gallon or one liter of petrol. Because the resource is subsidized by the lives, the livelihoods, the bloods, the tear, tears, and the sufferings of communities who live in the oil fields far away from the gas stations and far away from the fancy cars driven in rich countries. I'll give one example of the corporate takeover of UN decision-making processes. There is a restricted conference coming up in the Netherlands, which is supported by the United Nations and some member states, and it is advertised as business and industry consultation with government and civil society. And it's going to be focused on the green economy agenda. Pay attention to that. Business and industry consultation with government. To me, it sounds like the tail now wagging the dog. Governments used to consult industry. Now industry consults government. In other words, industry is the one that is the driving seat. And governments have become nothing more than shoeshine boys to corporations. And so the... the one of the clear assignments for civil society is to recapture the public space. And one of the ways we can do this is being promoted by many groups already that
we should work together and set targets to create people-driven treaties that would hold transnational corporations, for example, to account for human rights abuses, for environmental crimes, and for resource theft around the world. And there should be a tribunal that could try corporations like oil corporations for ecocide, and ecocide should be put on the same platform as other crimes against humanity. Now, we see, <laughs> we see clearly that the so-called high-tech driven oil corporations are not able to handle even small oil spills. Example was what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. Under one, one kilometer deep Gulf of Mexico water, it took a long, long process before BP could manage to stop that spill. In my country, Nigeria, in January this year, there was a gas rig explosion in only 40 feet deep water. 40 feet is not up to 20 meters. But Chevron could not stop. They didn't know how to stop the fire. When they started drilling a relief well before they could go far, the fire went off on their own, and they said, we don't know how the, why the fire went off, that maybe some rocks fell into the faulty well and blocked the well. Now, that's not a way to handle, handle techno, uh, oil field accidents. We can't allow a sector that relies on heat and miss to control the direction of energy production, to control activities that grossly affect livelihoods and life of people, these sectors need to be clearly and strongly regulated. And the time to do this is now. I personally applaud co countries like Ecuador who have enshrined the rights of Mother Earth in their constitution. And it's about time that the United Nations takes seriously the proposal for the declaration of the rights of Mother Earth as a globally recognized right. So far, only two countries have recognized this right, Ecuador and Bolivia. Other countries have to take, take note of this. And we need to be able to stand. When we talk about sustainable development, we should be speaking about this in the context that we are equipped as people to stand together to defend the rights of the planet because we have only one planet. So I applaud Ecuador, not just for declaring the rights of Mother Earth, right to the planet, but for taking seriously, taking action against corporations who have destroyed the Amazon and the environments of that country. I also applaud Brazil. The spills of recent by Chevron have not gone, or gone unnoticed. I applaud every nation that stands up to defend the environment. And I hope that my own nation will soon stand up to defend the environment. Now, talking about red, I believe you all agree with me that red is not green. And that greed is not green. Mahatma Gandhi said that the world, the planet, has enough resources to meet everybody's need, but not enough resources to meet everybody's greed. The way red is packaged is certainly going to cause more problems. And the continual drive by the private sector to commercialize everything and commodify nature must be checked. And Rio should have been a place where this will be made to happen. But unfortunately, we don't need to guess about this. It's not going to happen in Rio. And this is very sad. And so you find people, corporations like the chemical industry, looking for ways to determine methodologies for putting values 
on environmental services such as the natural filtration of water by woodland. This is all crazy. We, we know that money, money is fiction because just you pick a piece of paper and write they have a, a promise to pay the sum of this or that. It's a, it's a way of measuring uh, transactions, but we cannot put money, we cannot put monetary value to nature. It is simply not possible. You can't pay, you can't determine the value of my life in terms of money. You can't determine the value of the soil in terms of money. And so talking about payment for environmental services is something that we challenge and reject. I do realize that over the years, we've got to, the world has been more or less told over and over again that public structures are not efficient, governments cannot run business, business must be left for business, that only the private sector is efficient. Now tell me, how efficient is the financial sector? Certainly it's not government sector, but when the private sector messes up, the public sector rescues it. And so we find a system where governments do everything to bribe the private sector to invest, in quotes, and find innovative ways of doing things. I believe, if you allow me to believe what I believe, that what is needed is for humanity to recover its humanity. Money has become a religious creed in the world. And the financial sector drivers have become the high priest. We have to dethrone them from their seats of hypocrisy. We need to recover our right to live in solidarity with one another, not in competition. And this is the time for us to ask a lot of questions. And I'm going to end by asking a number of questions. With the, on the background that I conclude by saying that Rio Plus 20 does not generate any form of optimism in most sectors that we, many of us deal with. We are not expecting something that will come out there after the two days conference, something that will come out there that will change the direction of the world. But certainly whether we expect this or that to happen, what will come out of Rio Plus 20 is going to influence the direction of decision making in terms of environmental issues and all the issues to be discussed for the next decades. This is why we need to organize, especially on the outside, to pass a very strong message to our leaders and negotiators who would be in the conference room making decisions that will affect our children and our grandchildren. Now, <laughs> I like that. I like singular clap. You know, I can, I can actually clap with one finger if you allow me. <laughs> I believe Barbara, Barbara raised a lot of issues about the fact that we have to tell truth to power and we have to recognize. This was the fault. This has been the fault. That was the major fault of, of 1992 was that although the problems were analyzed, the fundamental root causes were not tackled. And so today, we see have the problems that have deep roots in social relations, in economic relations, and in simple terms, without being dogmatic, the problem is the crisis of capitalism. And we, don't, we should not be afraid of that C word. And so the epic rise and blind elevation of the market as answer to every crisis continues to create more problems and marks out the green economy as more or less green mask of capitalism, to paraphrase La Via Capesina. Smallholder farmers who hold the key to feeding the world with adequate and wholesome foods still get squeezed and denied support while agribusiness expands, grab lands, patent lives, and have their agenda sponsored with public funds and other resources. The very farmers who produce food go to bed hungry every day. This is not acceptable. It is time to build food sovereignty, 
It's time to build energy sovereignty based on resilient, localized, renewable systems of low energy consumption. The concept of sustainability itself needs to be detoxified because it's been clearly corrupted over the years. <laughs> sustainability cannot mean sustainability of profit, and we cannot allow it to mean unlimited growth and expanded consumption and the inordinate profit margins for monopolists. Rio Plus 20 ought to ask questions such as, growth for whom? Why growth? What growth? And by what means of production? It should be a space to reclaim our humanity and escape the trajectory set by fossil fuel military industrial complex. I've heard some people talk about environment-friendly warfare. Sounds just like the Ozimoron clean coal. But this is the kind of concept that the world has come to accept. We have to reject falsehood and stand for what is true. Rio Plus 20 should be the time for us to take a long, a long focused look back. And hopefully we can do this not in anger, but in clear definition of the path we want to drive forward. So we're looking back. It's time for us to look back. But we're looking back so as to fashion the way to go forward. I wish all of us very fruitful time of deliberations these coming few days. Thank you.